Welcome to the pre-recording of lecture 7 of MCS 481. So in this lecture we consider the problem of partitioning what we will call a Y monotone polygon. So the polygons we consider in this lecture are not convex, but we will uh, partition any polygon into Y monotone polygons. So I will first introduce this notion and then we will see an application of the sweep line method. Um, again, so we introduced the sweep line method when we considered the solution of the line segment intersection problem. So we will reapply the same ID here. The lecture is more or less self-contained. So I will outline the algorithm uh, in a top-down uh, fashion. There are five subroutines. I will try to uh, sketch one or two um, of those um, subroutines. And the main result of this lecture is that we can partition any polygon into monotone pieces in cost n log n and in space that is linear in the number of vertices n. So that's the main result. Okay, so what is a Y monotone polygon or just a monotone polygon? <clears throat> so here is an example. Uh, so the polygon that you see here is not convex. So you can see that you can draw vertical line segments and the intersection of a vertical line with a polygon will have pieces that are inside and outside. So not all the, the intersection is not connected. But here you see that if we are intersecting this polygon with a horizontal line, then the intersection is one line segment. Um, it can also be empty, or it can be a vertex. But in any case, it is connected. So we will apply the sweep line. So the L is this imaginary line uh, that you see drawn here in this example. Uh, the L is actually represented just by one number, a Y coordinate. So an important uh, benefit of having a monotone polygon, a Y monotone polygon, is that if you walk from the top vertex to the bottom vertex, you can go to the left or to the right, then you, the points that you encounter will be always monotone decreasing. At the, at the very top, you could have a horizontal line segment, and at the bottom, you can also have a vertical line segment, but um, you will not make any turns. Okay, and uh, our goal is to triangulate a polygon in n log n time. So the lecture is focused on partitioning a polygon into monotone pieces. In the next lecture, we will see how to triangulate then a monotone polygon. So the picture here is our running example. Um, it contains, uh, it is not a Y monotone polygon. So you can see that you can draw lines. I will not try to do this, but you can see that you can draw horizontal lines and the intersection of the horizontal line with the polygon consists of multiple disjoint line segments. Okay, so on input in our algorithm is a doubly connected edge list. So we have the convex hull of our polygon. So we can walk from one vertex to the other. Uh, we start typically at the highest vertex, uh, so they will be um, described or drawn with uh, empty squares. 
at the so that's the topmost, uh, but also any vertex for which the neighbors are lower is a start vertex. Um, the black squares, uh, they are the end vertex. At an end vertex, uh, the bottom vertices are uh, end vertices, but an end vertex has higher uh, neighbors. And we have that the inner angle uh, is in both cases less than 180 degrees. Okay, so if that is not the case, if the angle is larger than 180 degrees, then we distinguish between merge vertices and split vertices. At a merge vertex, uh, the two pieces in the intersection with the sweep line they merge. So just before the merge vertex, the intersection is disjoint. After, just after, or, or just at the merge, merge vertex, uh, they, the, the, the intersection line segments, they join. The opposite happens in, at a split vertex. At the split vertex, or just before, uh, just when the sweep line is just above a split vertex, then the intersection is connected. Uh, or it cannot be. It can also be the case that it's not connected. But I should say that uh, it's uh, one connected line segment in the intersection becomes disjoint, becomes disconnected. Okay, so we have four cases, and then we have the regular vertices. Uh, so these are the all the other cases, and they are marked with black dots. So these are the uh, none of the above. So what is now a turn vertex? Uh, a vertex is where the orientation of the walk switches from down to up. That's a turn uh, vertex. And uh, this happens, uh, we start to turn uh, the orientation at um, a merge vertex, so we go from the top vertex to the merge vertex. We were going down, but then we go up again. Down, up again. Uh, the um, down to up is a turn vertex. So uh, what we will do is we will actually partition the polygon by eliminated, eliminating all the turn vertices. Um, and that will be the, uh, so at the end of our algorithm, we will have a polygon, we will have added diagonals, so that our polygon no longer contains turn vertices. All right, um, here is our first uh, lemma. So if there are no turn vertices, so if you, and I, I now realize that the previous definition might have been incomplete. So when the orientation can change from down to up or up to down, it depends whether you walk counterclockwise or clockwise. So we have a doubly connected edge list. Um, okay, so here it is then. Uh, so if that's also a criterion, actually, to uh, be defined what is a monotone uh, polygon. Uh, but we will make this now more precise. So if there are no split and no merge vertices, then actually the uh, polygon is monotone. So we will prove this in the opposite direction, so by contraposition. If assume that uh, the polygon is not Y monotone, so you can draw a horizontal line and the intersection is not connected. Now, we will show that in that case, there is at least one split or a merge vertex. Okay, so here are the two cases that we consider. So we have a sweep line 
and we have in the intersection at least two um, two disconnected line segments. And now we can go up or down, but since we have only one polygon, the intersection cannot stay disconnected. So we are either so there are, this is a picture proof, actually. We are either in one of these two cases. Uh, so I have drawn the simplest case cases, uh, but they are quite general. So you can go either up or down. If you move down and uh, it becomes connected, then we are at... Uh, merge vertex i'm sorry so if we i think no i think uh, the 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 connections is fine uh, so i think if we actually move down uh, and it becomes connected this actually happened at um, yes uh, i see what uh, so we actually always move the sweep line down so actually here uh, we have a split vertex, uh, but the, the two line segments in the intersection, they become connected. If you move the sweep line up, uh, then actually we have a merge uh, vertex. Um, so moving the sweep line up is something that we don't do in the algorithm. It goes from down from top to the bottom. This is why my confusion on uh, why uh, that happens here. Uh, but these are the, so at some point in either of these two cases, it could happen in both cases. Um, so, but you must have, uh, if, if the polygon is not monotone, then you either have a split vertex or you have a merge vertex. You could have both as well, but it cannot be that both cases do not happen because if both cases would not happen, then you would have two polygons. And that is not the case. You have only one of them. Okay, um, time for an exercise. Uh, so the purpose of the lectures is that you get to read, uh, you get to understand the textbook. Uh, so the lectures, in some sense, do not replace the textbook, but they introduce the reading of the textbook. Um, so I put these exercises in the middle of the lecture. Is that now it's time to reflect a little bit? Um, so here is our running example. And uh, on input, we have a doubly connected edge list, which represents uh, this uh, input polygon. On output, we have an updated uh, doubly connected edge list. We have added these two red diagonals. So that's one solution. So we now have one, two, three faces. Uh, so these are the polygons in the partition. And you see that each of these three is actually... Um, monotone um, piece. So the purpose of this first exercise is that we let the definitions sink in. Um, the other thing is, and probably I should draw this, um, so there are, uh, I will draw in blue here, so here you see an alternative uh, partition. So instead of this red, I could have um, partitioned this into four pieces. Uh, it's also a partitioning, and all the pieces are also monotone. So uh, what do all the ways have in common? Uh, so in some sense, uh, this exercise could be rather exhaustive. Uh, but again, if you don't have the answer right away, and I'm going to tell what the answer will be, uh, if you don't see the answer right away, draw many examples, and then it will come to you. Um, now, what do all these two ways, all those ways have in common? Well, you no longer have turn vertices. Uh, so, in the diagonals that you add, all the split and merge vertices must be involved. 
that is the, 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 the reiteration here of the uh, statement of the lemma. Okay, I'm 15 minutes in. Uh, at this point, you could take a break and let it sink in or turn to the textbook and start reading um, the relevant section. Um, okay, so let me now introduce uh, the line sweep method. Um, so the input and output is a doubly connected edge list. So we can focus on the edges. Um, so this doubly connected edge list initially has only one face. We have only, well, we have an inner face and we have an outer face, but um, there is only one polygon. Uh, in the update, we will have many uh, more faces um, that define the partition. Okay, so we introduced uh, the data structures in our line segment intersection. We have balanced binary search trees, also called priority queues. Um, so the point, so we will sweep, we will imagine a line that goes from the top to the bottom. Um, so we can quickly find the top vertex uh, in this doubly connected edge list. Um, we start there, so we initialize the event queue and uh, we process the points uh, in their priority. There is a status, um, so in the sweep line we often have to look to the leftmost and to the right uh, of the current vertex. Um, so the status uh, stores not all the edges. Uh, so again, we could have a polygon with millions of line segments, but it's sufficient to consider only those edges that are currently intersected by the sweep line. We will also adjust the sweep line that whenever we encounter a new vertex, we will encounter new line segments, new edges, and we will update the status. Important, this is a balanced binary search tree. So in data structures, we covered self-balancing binary search trees. Looking, updating them, and searching in them, they all have a logarithmic cost. Um, so the cost is proportional to the depth of the tree. Uh, with any polygon, we have n vertices, n edges. So n is that dimension. All right, uh, time to pause again. I mentioned the line intersection problem multiple times. Um, so we had a very important lecture where we introduced uh, the line segment intersection method. That was the first time when we encountered uh, the line sweep method. So now it's good actually if um, the previous slide went really too fast. It was included for making this lecture self-contained. But at this point, you should look into uh, the previous, or if you have studied already, then you can immediately solve this exercise. Uh, so you see here, at uh, the current height of the sweep line, we have uh, one, two, three, four, five, six intersection points. So there are six line segments in your binary search tree. It's a balanced binary search tree. So you cannot take as your root the leftmost or the rightmost. Good choices are the third or the fourth line segment. And uh, define the status uh, as this balanced uh, binary search tree. So how will you solve this? Uh, you start by labeling uh, the segments S1, S2, S3, S4, S5, S6 in the order from left to right. And then you describe, or even better, you draw the uh, balanced binary tree that encodes the adjacency information. Okay, um, 
here is now the general outline of the algorithm. Um, it's very familiar to, it has the same structure as the algorithm that we use to solve the line segment intersection problem. So we store all the vertices in the priority queue. So they are ordered as height. Um, we initialize uh, the status uh, because when we start, we are just above the polytope. And then we start moving the line down each time popping the next highest vertex from the queue. We determine the type and then we handle uh, the type. So the um, important subroutine breaks up into five different uh, subroutines. So we have uh, five if statements uh, depending on the five types. Okay, so now uh, exercise three uh, asks you to, again, essentially uh, look at the definitions. Uh, what is a start vector vertex? A start vertex is when the edges of, so we have a left and a right edge, when the other points, the other endpoints, other than V, are below the vertex. And why is that a primitive operation? Well, uh, primitive means that it can be done in constant cost. Well, to explain this, you have to refer to the doubly connected edge list. So every edge has a twin. So that allows us to reverse the orientation. Um, so if you go, if you assume that we are going clockwise, then the next vertex is the vertex to the left, if we ha are, are, are at the top, at the start vertex, we take uh, the, the we, we go to the previous um, vertex and the twin of that. So it's a doubly connected vertex. I'm explaining this uh, not too well here, uh, but again, the purpose of this exercise is to slow down a little bit. Uh, what does it mean to have a doubly connected edge list and why this is such an important operation? Because uh, the determining of the type is actually now a constant time. Okay, so um, there are five cases. I will try to explain uh, one, at least one case, uh, very carefully. One of the exercises uh, asks you to go through the running example. And I picked the polygon that I drew as my running example on the slides to be a little bit simpler than the polygon that is in the textbook. Um, it's also good to actually go through uh, the textbook example. All right, how do we handle a split vertex? Perhaps we should look at the picture. Um, so we have the sweep line, which goes through the vertex V. And what are we going to do? We're going to draw a diagonal. Uh, we're going to partition the polygon where the lower end point is V of the diagonal that we add. So we add one more edge to partition the polygon. V is one of the points. But what is now the other point that we need to consider. Well, the other point is the lowest vertex above the sweep line. And why is it important that it is the lowest one? Well, imagine pushing the sweep line up a little bit, so you go back, so, or, or, or I'm sorry, so we have, um, Yes, so we, we, we have a split vertex. So actually what we want is actually we want to remove uh, the split vertex. So we have that when we have partitioned, the two pieces are monotone. 
So after uh, the sweep line, if you go, if you move down a little bit, you, you will still have that there are two different line segments in the intersection, but they will belong to different pieces. Uh, so what I'm trying to explain now is also going to the proof of the correctness. By adding a diagonal that ends in V, we actually are making that the two pieces are actually not having V as a split vertex. All right, uh, so why is it important that U is the lowest uh, vertex above the sweep line? Um, that will hopefully become clear. So we have three cases. Uh, either this is to the left um, of the um, split vertex, like you see here. Um, we have the uh, vertex E, that's the first edge. So we have in the status, so we can actually see uh, the adjacency. So it can be the top of that uh, first edge to the left, but it can also be uh, like in the middle case here, if it's the upper end point, or it could also be lower at the other edge. So it's one of these edges here. Um, so finding the helper um, is actually not done in constant time, so it's important to also realize this, but the time is proportional to the size of the status. That is important. Okay, so what this slide does is introducing the notion of a helper. So with every edge, we have a helper. The edge, that helper can be the upper um, end of the edge, but it can also be another point. So here is the helper defined. Uh, so given an edge and the sweep line, uh, the helper of the edge is the lowest vertex above the line segment. And uh, I was um, pausing a little bit. Why is it so important that it is the lowest vertex? Because what you must have is that the diagonal that you add it lies entirely inside the polygon. So the fact that it is the lowest point uh, will ensure this. So that is important here. Um, so that will be important also in the proof of the correctness. Uh, so if you, what we will have is that the diagonals that we add, they all belong to the inside, in the interior of the input polygon. And here you see on our running example, um, so the three different cases that we may encounter. So each time when we insert a new edge in the status, we actually are going to compute its helper. Um, and here again, as far as the cost goes, um, we may be worried about quadratic cost because we have n uh, line segments. And also actually the, we may be running many times uh, through uh, the segments in the status. Oh. But then also the uh, line segments, they are ordered in a balanced binary search tree. So searching through this might not be that bad, searching in the status. All right, um, here is now the pseudo code for the split vertex. And um, well, perhaps I can do this. So it's actually not, I can go to two pages. Um, so when you look at the algorithm, you should actually also look at the pictures. Uh, so we also have proof by pictures. We have definitions introduced by pictures. Uh, but pictures, they're just often examples and they may not be quite general enough. So we need to be capable to write everything also in words, which is necessary if we are going to define uh, the code uh, for the algorithms. 
Okay, so we are going to, um, for every edge that is, so we have a new event point uh, and it is a split vertex. So here you see the cases. So we are going to insert as the diagonal uh, the helper. Then the helper of the edge will be the new vertex. Um, so the new split vertex will also be the lowest point that is just above this helper. So look at the example. We have the in first case, we have the edge E, which is the edge directly to the left of the vertex V. So after, so when we continue to the next point afterwards, so we have to update. Uh, we have to, for this edge, we have to change the uh, its helper, what becomes its helper. Um, then we also do this for the rightmost edge. Uh, with the top endpoint that is equal to V. Um, and we have to insert it. And also for that edge, uh, the vertex, so imagine just right after the swoop line again. So this edge uh, that is ending, it's a right edge that ends at V, then the helper of that edge is actually the vertex V. Okay, I'm going very carefully through this case, um, and I hope that uh, as a first introduction, uh, this will suffice. Um, so if we think about the correctness, uh, so we are so the correctness is first and foremost ensured by the definition of this helper, which is the lowest point just above the split vertex, so that the diagonal that we insert lies entirely into the form form. So we have the update of the uh, status. We search in the status, which is logarithmic. And we have the uh, setting of the helper vertices. Okay, handling a merge vertex. So here now V, when the line is there, uh, V is now a merge vertex. So we again work with E and E prime. Now the it seems like it's just a mirror. However, however, so the diagonal that we want to add is actually the U and the V. So at a merge vertex, uh, we actually have to wait uh, till actually we get at the split vertex. In this case here, um, I'm first going to introduce the algorithm with pictures. So at the um, merge vertex, actually, we will um, handle the partitioning by checking the helper uh, of um, E when the line is there, when So this happens when we are at the split vertex U, then actually we will um, add that diagonal. What do we need to do about the merge vertex then? Well, we need to make sure that there is no more merge vertex. So we still need to check, and here actually I don't really have a good picture of this. Um, so I'm going to try to introduce the code here. So 
if the helper is a merge vertex, um, so we, we are at the merge vertex, but the helper of that is also a merge vertex, then actually we need to insert uh, the diagonal there. So here you see that uh, what happens is that a merge vertex is eliminated when you actually are below at another merge vertex. Um, <clears throat> when we update the status, so in that case, then uh, that leftmost edge is should no longer be at the status because we are going down. So at the merge vertex, the line segments, uh, so we are actually at the lowest point of the line segment. So because it's a merge, uh, so we can delete it from the status. We have to update uh, the status. It could be that another edge is directly to the left. And then also, if the helper of that new edge is actually a merge vertex, then we have another diagonal that we need to add. And we need to update uh, the helper. Um, the helper of E is then actually uh, the vertex V. So this is a lot more complicated to go through without pictures. Um, uh, I will now go perhaps a little bit too fast. Uh, the handling of the start and the end is quite straightforward. So at the very beginning, the first vertex that we encounter will be a start vertex. And I hope that that, that is obvious. Um, so we will insert the rightmost edge, and uh, of that rightmost edge, the um, helper is actually the vertex. So that's the initialization. Now, question, why don't you insert the leftmost edge into the status? Um, so let's think about that a little bit. Um, handle the endpoint. Um, well, here's probably the answer. I mean, we always start by looking at uh, the leftmost edge <clears throat> in all the handlers. Uh, so that's why we actually store the rightmost edges. OK, so if it is a merge vertex, uh, if the helper of the vertex that we are considering of the edge at the left is actually a merged vertex, then we insert um, the, um, the end vertex, the diagonal spanned by the end vertex and the helper. And then we delete that edge from the status. Um, Okay, so now the subroutine to handle a regular vertex. So at the regular vertex, we uh, distinguish uh, between whether the interior, um, whether we are uh, at the left boundary. Uh, so if the, the, if the regular vertex lies to the left or if the interior of uh, the polygon lies to the right. So then we look at uh, the helpers of the leftmost edge and we insert diagonals if they are merge, if the helpers are merge vertices. So each time when we do this, we actually eliminate a merge vertex. So here you see, um, I don't have a picture of this. Uh, but we handled a merge vertex later on when we encounter a split vertex or when we encounter a regular uh, vertex. Uh, this is how each time we have to test whether the point that is just below uh, the leftmost, uh, just above the uh, leftmost edge, if that is a merge vertex. Okay, so we have the two cases. Uh, either the regular point is at the left or at the right of P. 
and you see that the instructions are very similar. So the processing of a regular vertex will also uh, eliminate all the um, merge vertices. Again, uh, the merge vertices are not eliminated. So at the current spot, if V is a merge vertex, we don't eliminate the merge vertex at that point, but we either eliminate it at an endpoint, a regular point, or at a split uh, vertex. All right, um, time for an exercise. And um, this is in perhaps the most important exercise. It's exercise four. Um, we started this uh, considering this uh, problem already earlier. So already with exercise one. Um, so you can start by solving this exercise um, by looking at drawing the doubly connected edge list of the input. So you can uh, choose a labeling of all the vertices. And I'm not going to count uh, the number of vertices you have. But uh, the number of vertices equals the number of steps. Uh, so an obvious choice is to uh, take one. Or you can order the points according to height. Um, and perhaps that's that should be done. So that's actually the natural order. So you order the points. Uh, so in some sense, you have to copy this picture and um, kind of uh, label the points according to height. Uh, so you can copy this picture and some of the points are at the same height. If there is, uh, if that happens, so the two endpoints here at the same height, then you break the tie by looking at the leftmost. At each case, you actually uh, decide what happens. So you go very carefully through all the uh, stages. So you uh, describe what happens. Um, and at the end, you should have a correct partitioning that has eliminated all the um, turn vertices. Uh, the split and the merge vertices. Okay, um, <clears throat> correctness and cost. Here is the lemma. Uh, the algorithm that we have sketched is correct. Um, what it actually does is it eliminates all the uh, split and merge vertices. So for all the pieces in the updated doubly connected edge list, they are all monotone polygons. Okay, so it's important uh, that there are two pieces in the proof. So again, this is an introduction to the textbook. I will not prove this in great detail, but I have indicated already uh, why it is important that the helper is the lowest uh, point strictly above the sweep line. Because that makes that the uh, all the added diagonals will not intersect any of the edges. Because they lie entirely in the interior. That is important. So we don't create any new vertices. That's also important for the cost that will happen. So in the first part, uh, you could say that uh, the split vertices will be eliminated immediately as soon as we encounter a split vertex. All the merge vertices will be encountered, uh, will be eliminated, so that might be harder to prove. But they will be eliminated in the other cases. Uh, if we encounter a split vertex, merge vertex uh, or end vertex. So the other three cases. At the start vertex, we have no uh, merge vertices. <clears throat> OK. Um, let's now handle the cost in the last four minutes. So 
Uh, it's also important that we have uh, the primitives. So um, it's important that we have already in some sense sorted. Uh, so we have a doubly connected edge list. Um, so this actually allows us to traverse uh, this. Um, so the sorting is actually the n log n point also. So you could actually just sort the vertices. But I think you can insert into a priority queue um, as well. Um, initializing the status as constant time, just um, adding all the uh, adding just the start vertex, or actually the initialization was done with empty. All right, um, because we work with balanced binary search trees as our data structures, um, the update cost, the search cost, they are all over it. Uh, so that's an important point. So if we have n points, therefore, uh, the whole algorithm takes no more than n log n time. So we can partition a polygon into monotone pieces in the same time that it costs to construct the convex hull. The storage is linear, uh, so the status will never grow more than the total number of edges, and that is n. And every point is stored once in the priority queue. And that's it. So we have a very efficient algorithm to partition a polygon into monotone pieces. In the next lecture, we will see how to take a monotone piece and triangulate this. If it is convex, we have covered this in the previous lecture. Uh, so I will collect um, exercises later. So exercise four on the slides is important. Um, if you read the textbook, and actually that's also the, the goal for uh, this course, uh, the exercises in the textbook are a little bit more elaborate. Um, so at this point, the exercises on the slides are a little bit more important. But then later on, the exercises in the textbook might also uh, become more important as a way to reflect on the material. Okay, so I outlined in this lecture uh, the main idea of the application of the line sweep method to partition a polygon into monotone pieces. In the next lecture, we will consider an algorithm to triangulate a monotone polygon. And that will conclude uh, the uh, third chapter in the textbook. So of the three lectures in this third chapter, this is the most important one. So if you get through this lecture, then you have a good understanding of the essence of the chapter.